My yard would get so bad with mosquitoes in the summer that it was basically unusable. I could barely be outside for any length of time without getting bitten up immediately. That is, until I started using this three-step process to completely eliminate mosquitoes from my yard. If you do any one of these three things, you'll notice a dramatic reduction in bugs and bites. But do all three together, you'll be enjoying a mosquito-free summer no bug spray needs. The first step to reducing the mosquito population around your house has to do with how they reproduce. Mosquitoes lay eggs in stagnant or slow moving water, often found in ponds, bird baths, gutters, or other sources of standing water. You can see that I've got some water accumulated in my gorilla cart after some heavy spring rain. My lawn sweeper has a little in the bottom of the collection hopper too. And I've got some recycling bins that would make prime egg laying spots as well. You can go around your property and look for standing water like I I've done here and simply dump it out. This cultural practice eliminates egg laying potential and it doesn't cost anything at all. Another strategy is to use a product like these mosquito dunks to actually kill the mosquito larva. Oh hey, real quick, all the products that I'm using in this video are linked in the video description. So enjoy the video and if you feel like you need more information about anything that you see me using, I've always got you covered. Mosquito dunks are a biological control method that works by releasing bacteria into the water after the dunk dissolves. Bacteria produces toxins that are lethal to mosquito larvae and it's highly specific to mosquitoes, meaning that it won't affect fish or wildlife. Rather than dumping out all that standing water, I'm going to treat it instead and hope that mosquitoes use it for laying eggs. Eggs that will never actually turn into adult insects. You could even put out a five gallon bucket filled with water and a dunk to encourage the mosquitoes to lay eggs in your tainted trap. If the weather is dry, this method alone can be incredibly effective in controlling mosquitoes around your house. With dry weather, they won't have as many options for laying eggs, except for your easily accessible bacteria-filled bucket of doom. I'm in the beautiful state of Minnesota, and you've probably heard about our 10,000 lakes. But with all that water, the lesser known fact is our 10 billion mosquitoes. It was actually a toss-up for state bird between the loon and the mosquito. The loon won, but I see more mosquitoes than I do loons, so... Just saying. Okay, now that I've interrupted the mosquito life cycle and before the heavy artillery nuclear warfare that is step three, I'm on to step two, and that's these bait stations by Spartan Mosquito. Most bait station eradicators work the same way. The tubes are filled with a mixture of sugar, yeast, and water. The yeast ferments the sugar, producing carbon dioxide and other attractants that lure mosquitoes. Adult mosquitoes, both male and females, are attracted to the bait. They enter the tubes and feed on the mixture, which also contains sodium chloride salt. Once they consume the mixture, the mosquitoes will be dead in a couple days. I like the Spartan brand because they're made in the United States, so if you love America, Ah, there you go. Now the commonly understood problem with bait stations and bug zappers, really anything that attracts bugs in order to kill them, is that it brings more bugs into the area than there would be anyway. Well, the key here is placement. The instructions talk about placing the tubes at the perimeter of your property in an attempt to draw the bugs away from where the people are. To activate these tubes, just add warm water and with the white cap in place, give them a good shake. Replace the white cap with the black cap that has the hook on it and is ready for deployment. As stated previously, I'm shooting for the four corners approach and hanging these at the outer edges of my property, away from the house or where any people would be hanging out. The hooks make it easy to find a spot to hang them and keep track of when you set them out because they're only good for about 30 days and you'll want to change them out about once a month. Okay, the first two methods are incredibly effective on their own, but sometimes extreme situations call for extreme measures. And that's what this final step is all about. Bifenthrin is one of my favorite insecticides because of its versatility to control a whole bunch of pests, including ants, termites, spiders, even scorpions, and of course, mosquitoes. It works by disrupting the nervous system of insects, which leads to paralysis and ultimately death. It remains effective long after application, and the insects just have to come in contact with it for it to be absorbed through their exoskeleton bodies. Pretty cool. I'm using a product called Talek, and you won't find it on the shelves of the big box stores. It's a little too hardcore for that. I get mine off Amazon, and again, I'll have a link for you if you want to pick some up. The active ingredient, Bifenthrin, comes in a variety of forms, from liquids, dust, granules, etc. Talic is a liquid, and I'm going to be applying it with a spray. Now, you could use your standard run-of-the-mill two-gallon pump sprayer like this one, super cheap and available everywhere. 
nothing wrong with that option. But if you want to level up your game just a little bit, I highly recommend a battery powered backpack sprayer like this one from Greenworks that I'm using. You can mix up to four gallons at a time. So bigger volume means more time spraying and less time mixing. Plus, no pumping. The battery keeps things pressurized and you're good to go. My mixing rate is one ounce per gallon of water and you can see the jug has the measuring lines built in so that makes things super easy. I'm using a tip that gives me a fine atomization of the product. You want a fine mist rather than a jet stream. A nice mist is better because you're trying to get full coverage on the underside of leaves and all the crevices that mosquitoes like to hide. I'll actually flip the tip upside down so that it's spraying upwards and I'll try to get the undersides of everything too. Mosquitoes aren't going to lay out on the surface of a leaf in direct sun like they're tanning or something. They're going to see cool shade for resting and that's going to be on the back side of the leaves or in those hard to find areas. My strategy is to shoot for the plants, trees, and bushes because that's where the bugs land and rest during the daytime. They stay fairly close to the ground too so no major need to try to spray the tops of trees or anything like that. I only spray about 20 feet up or so. I generally don't blanket spray the grass. I just think most of the mosquitoes hang out in the woods or on the perimeter of my lawn in the bushes and brush so I I focus most of my efforts on those areas. You're going to see me wearing some safety gear too. This is pretty serious stuff and you don't really want to be in contact with it. I have latex gloves to keep my hands covered and cool guy shades to protect my eyes and to look cool. I'm also wearing pants and long sleeves and yes it's hot out so it's pretty uncomfortable but the safety of being fully covered is worth it. I'm rocking calf length muck boots that you probably didn't even notice because they're camo. These rinse off super easy after walking through the treated areas. I definitely don't want to be breathing this stuff in either so I'm rocking this Breaking Bad respirator to freak my neighbors out. You all remember the N95 rating from COVID times right? Those are rookie numbers compared to this P100 half mask. You don't have to go all safety sack like I do, but please put something over your breathing holes. Dust mask, bandana, t-shirt, something. Now the backpack sprayer works great for most people, but I've got a big yard and I want to show you one more option for the big lot boys watching and that's the pull behind tank sprayer. These things are sweet and mine technically mounts to the back of my mower, but whether it's a mounted design or a pull behind form factor, these large volume sprayers are where it's at for big yards and fast applications. Mixing is a bit different when I'm making 26 gallons instead of four, and I'm using my measuring pitcher to get things dialed in. I'm going to be using the wand to apply the product, but you could blanket spray your grass too using the spray boom off the back. But like I said before, I'm trying to treat the tree line at the edges of my property because that's where those little guys like to hang out. My spray pattern is a little more aggressive for the woods than it is for the plants near the house and that's because distance is starting to be more of a factor. I want to get good coverage into the woods a bit without having to walk in myself and I want to spray up into the trees and get coverage on some of those low hanging branches too. I'm hitting the behind the back shots, the under the leg hopping trick shots, just have some fun with it. I do a lot of spraying from the seat of the tractor too, mostly because I'm lazy. You can see I'm sweeping the tree line and getting full coverage as I slowly drive alongside the edge of the lawn. And what an absolutely beautiful day. Yes, we have summer here in Minnesota. It's just short and humid. This three-step process has my yard staying mosquito-free all summer, and I don't need bug spray just to simply be working out in the lawn. If you need to control other pests on your property, I've got a great ant video that you're going to want to see. And I've also got a method to keep your house 100% mouse-free. You can click into those here, and if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. I post DIY home and lawn care content all the time. And hey, thanks for watching.